Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. For those of you who haven't watched before, I'm Sophie Patterson, interior designer based in England. And today I'm very excited to do an autumn styling video with you guys. I'm gonna share some of my top tips on how to make your house ready for this season. We're gonna be joined by Celeste, who is an incredible florist. She's done lots of really beautiful arrangements around my house to welcome the new autumn season. And then I'm also gonna give you a little sneak peek at the chaos in my home right now because I'm doing a huge renovation in my entrance hall. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm good. Good, how are you? Not too bad, thank you. What have we got here? Well, this is my autumn wreath that Celeste made for me. Absolutely love it. I'm a big fan of a wreath, any excuse. And I think it's such a nice way to welcome in this new season into our home and our lives. Every time I open the door, I feel very autumnal and very cozy. And I love that all of this was made using locally sourced or foraged um, foliage and dried hydrangeas. So hopefully this will dry nicely and I'll be able to use it again. Well, I'm afraid it's all downhill after this amazing first impression. It's um, a bit of a building site inside. I didn't quite realise how disruptive this was going to be. I had this planned for quite a few months. I've been sourcing antiques and um, the wall lights that I showed you in Jam. I ordered those back in May. And it's all just kind of come together um, now, which isn't the perfect time because I've got my in-laws staying. I've got my daughter Ava's sixth birthday this weekend. Luckily not at home. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things you never quite realise, even though this is my job, how much disruption it is doing work at home. Always tell my clients, do not live in the house while we renovate, but I am my own worst client. So I've ignored all my own advice and done it. But on the walls, I've got a sample that was made. Basically, what we're trying to give the illusion of without spending crazy money is that this is proper wooden panelling like you would have had on period properties back in the day. Whereas a lot of people these days just put plant on moulding on the walls. Um, I really wanted the illusion of proper panelling, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money. You also have to take all your cornice and your architrave and your skirting off. Whereas what concept I've come up with here with my joiner is, if you imagine this is the wall, what we're going to be putting on is this plant on moulding. But what makes it feel a bit more um, genuine is the fact that we have this central panel and you can see it's got these angled chamfered um, edges. And this was kind of based on the panel of my door. And once all this is painted the same color, if this was the wall, and then I'm gonna paint this, the cornice at the top and the skirting and the architrave all the same color, I'm hoping it's gonna give the illusion of proper paneling. And I'm not just gonna paint it in a normal paint, I'm gonna paint it in a lime wash paint. So again, it's gonna give it a slightly more aged um, weathered fill, so I'm really, really excited about that. And hopefully that will all be complete and finished in three weeks time. I've never done a lime wash paint on any of my clients' projects before, but I was intrigued to use it because I think it's a beautiful patina. It kind of gives a similar effect to polished plaster. You know, when you can get like the clouds and the variation of color. So it's a really interesting finish. It's quite subtle, but I didn't want the polished feel to it. So it's gonna feel quite earthy, quite natural. But the other great thing about a lime paint or a lime wash is the fact that it's um, very environmentally friendly. So rather than experiment on a client's home, I wanted to see how it worked out in my own home. If it works, you know, I know that it will work on the walls, but I wanted to work out if it would be good with moulding and panelling on the walls as well. So you guys will be the first to find out. So let's get out of the builder's dust and come into my living room where we can enjoy some nice autumnal styling. When everyone thinks of autumn styling, particularly on YouTube, you think really cliche pumpkins, cinnamon sticks, broomsticks. I'm not into any of that. I like a very subtle autumnal feel in my house. And on Monday, I had such a great day with Celeste. She's so, so talented. Um, and I just let her loose. I feel like whenever you work with a creative who's very talented, you shouldn't restrict them too much by giving them too much brief. So I had no idea what she was gonna bring, but I just said to her, make it autumnal, make it beautiful, and this is what she's done. So I think the key thing, if you're using flowers in your house and you want to make it a bit more autumnal, is think about these kind of warm color tones, like the chrysanthemums, which 
aren't really my favourite flower normally, but it has such a beautiful blush pink with these tan coloured ranunculus, and these darker ranunculus as well, and then some foliage. It's a very subtle sort of transition from the summer into the autumn, and let's face it, it's not actually autumn yet. I mean, I know YouTubers love to celebrate autumn starting in August, but it's not autumn, it's not summer, but it's that just little period in between where you're getting ready for autumn. I would say though, if you're gonna to go to a lot of effort to get ready for seasonal decor, personally, you know, with Christmas, I'm one of those people that put up their Christmas decorations in November because if I'm gonna to go to that much effort, I wanna enjoy it for more than a month. And I kind of feel the same with autumn. I feel like, you know, otherwise you're literally gonna have these up for, you know, a week or two. Obviously natural flowers do die, but all of these ideas can be replicated. And whilst I might not go to this extent, I'm certainly gonna keep a few of the ideas that Celeste shared and keep them going for the next, you know, month or so. My good friend Celeste, she has a florist company called Celeste Rose Designs. For those of you who watched my masterpiece video, you might recognize her name. She did all the flowers there and she's my go-to florist in my house. So we're gonna start off with some iPhone footage of that because sadly Ollie was ill earlier this week. Um, so bear with us with the footage itself, but hopefully it'll be worth watching. So for a mantelpiece fireplace, when there's a thin ledge and you don't really show much of your vessel, something like this is really great. Um, this one isn't watertight, so it comes with a little handy pocket. And then to avoid the dreaded foam, base chicken wire, which you may already know, but I just cut a little piece of chicken wire and then you mould it sort of down. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. It's just yeah. literally going to hold the stems in place. So why is foam such a bad thing to use for those of us that don't know? It's a micro pollutant. It's, it just lives on forever in the water systems, which is generally just washed down. Um, and it's just not necessary. Yeah. So it's used in such vast quantities in the floral industry, along with other things, wrappings and plastics. I know, it's so frustrating. Yeah. But it's a micro pollutant that gets into all the water systems and fish. rivers and fish and everything like that. It's just not necessary. And this can be reused as well. This is um, scalpenized. So I'll probably, to be honest, once this has had its time with this piece, I'll just empty it out and leave it back in there for next time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, can't go wrong. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, so that's now ready to wipe on a mantelpiece. I generally put it up first and then water it, obviously, just to avoid spillages. That's and good idea. That so Celeste, you start with the foliage, don't you? And you make it quite low and wide. Yeah. Then step two, put in your more sturdy um, flower heads like the chrysanthemum. Yeah, so with this one, the biggest ones with the chrysanthemums. And then sort of work your way down. Yeah. And you spread those all out equally and you turn it as if it was like on a lazy season to make sure it's all balanced. Yeah. And then lastly, you add in the more delicate ones like the ranunculus. And the cosmos went in, yeah, filling in the gaps. Yeah. This is all foraged. Everything here. Is wow. Foraged. So this is all super easy to do. I've got um, Annabelle Hydrangea. Is that from your garden? Yes. Cherry plum, this is from a friend's garden. Um, old man's beard, the oak. Got a little bit of bracken. I've got some dock that's dried, which is lovely and it's wild. Some dried lavender to give that grey look. And then I've got a few more bits in now. And then I've got some ivy as well, some trailing ivy. On the fireplace, we wanted to do something really well, and obviously this isn't something you'd have on a day-to-day -day basis. All of this foliage, as she explains, is all foraged, apart from, I think, these ones. Um, and it just shows what you can create. You know, I love oak tree foliage. It's just such a beautiful branch. And my mum actually has an oak tree in her garden, so I'm planning on um, raiding that for the next couple of weeks at least. And then the trailing ivy as well. That's something that works really well at Christmas, not just autumn. But, you know, just three of these arrangements make such a big impact. And normally I have all the blue and white chinoiserie vases here. And what I found is that even if I just buy like a supermarket bouquet, like whether it's tulips or something, I can just buy two of those packets, pack it out with a bit of foliage, and that looks really, really impressive. So you don't need to spend a lot of money to have a big impact on your fireplace. 
If you have a smaller room or a smaller property and you're thinking, how do I replicate this into my own home? You don't need to have a massive fireplace. You don't really need to go big. It just shows what impact these kind of colors can have. Even when you've just got like a couple of flowers and this is a little sprig of rosemary, it still brings that same kind of effect. And this is perfect for having on a little side table. And whenever I'm arranging flowers in my home, especially if I'm doing them myself, I always like to put the majority of the flowers in the main vase on the coffee table, but then I always hold a few back to make sure that I do have a mini arrangement for a side table, or if you're having a party at home, like having a little tiny bud vase with some flowers in your guest loo, it's just such a nice touch. For me, the key color at autumn is this tan color, which I live in all year round. Um, and I wanted to make this room feel a little bit warmer, a little bit cozier for this time of year. I still love the cooling palette that I've got in here, but I think just by adding a few cushions in this color, it really warms things up. So this is the oak cushion from our new Andrew Martin collection, and it combines really nicely with greys. I always say this to people, wear grey, kind of was on trend for so long and now it's had its day, everyone's moving towards warmer colour palettes. That doesn't mean you've got to rip everything out and start again. If you've got you know, a grey sofa or lots of grey cushions, just mixing in one or two of this slightly warmer tan colour is going to completely change that look up and make it feel a lot more current and a lot more on trend. This is another one from our Andrew Martin collection. These are all actually my collection. Um, but what I love about this one is it's a slightly more subtle um, injection of that colour. You don't want to have too much blocky colour. So whenever I'm arranging cushions, I always try and go for something that almost looks like a solid colour, a complete neutral. And then in front, I'll have something that marries two of those colour palettes. Again, this one is bringing a slightly stronger colour at the end. And I think that ties in really nicely with the side table and the flowers. And then just to add a bit more layering and again, make it feel a bit more cozy. I think having a throw on your sofa is such a nice idea at all times, but definitely autumn, it really makes it feel extra cozy, extra layered. This one is from our Cozy collection. It's called the Sapporo um, Blanket and I'll link it in the description box. Is there yes. any sort of like main rules to how you sort of use throws? Great question, Ollie. So I do, like you say, very good, um, <laughs> good skills at noticing, I do one of two things. I either do like a casual throw like this, where it sort of drapes over the back. You kind of bunch it together a little bit, like cinch it in there, and then it spreads out onto the seat of the sofa. And I think that looks really nice. It looks a little bit more relaxed. Um, but I like to also combine that with over here is another example where I've just wrapped this one over the arm and this is much more neatly folded as well as sort of wrapping it over the arm. It's always nice if you can tuck it down beneath to the side of the seat pad, and um, that will look really neat. And again, this is a good example of how you can add more of that color without reupholstering your sofa, without getting new furniture, by changing the color of this throw. I had a gray one here before. It's completely changed the look of the sofa. I wanted to talk about these because I think a bespoke cushion is just, you know, it's such a beautiful thing. Um, these are on a plain white Belgium linen that I've had for a while. And then this trim is from Samuel and & Sons. And again, I loved how it has like the, um, the leaf motif, which I think works so well with the rest of the cushions that I've got. It's slowly and becoming your motif, I think. It is, I mean, talk about obsessed. Like this is what triggered it all. This is my famous oak leaf table with the amazing carving. And that really inspired not only this collection, but my masterpiece VIP salon. Like, it's something that I've always loved. I've always had a real affinity to the English countryside and I love oak trees. To me, they're such a symbol of Britain, like the noble oak. So these are the new collection. This is two of the six, I think, that were initially launching um, that I've designed with Addison Ross. I'm so excited about this collection. I love using photo frames. For me, I think in a home, you need to have photos of happy memories, people that you love, and that's what makes it a home. Um, and when I was designing these, I really wanted to create a photo frame that was aspirational but affordable. So these are going to retail at £60, which when you look at the, you know, the quality of them, the materials, this bronze frame, the beautiful different textures that you've got in the middle is really good value for money. What I loved about Addison Russ and why I decided to partner with them for the photo frames, there was a few companies that approached me. 
was that they have amazing customer service. So I've used them on all my projects for years and years. All the top designers, certainly in the UK and overseas, use them on their projects. Um, they've got a really great selection, but they also have this incredible service where included in price, you can upload a photo, which they will then print, physically put into your photo frame, and they'll send it anywhere in the world within three days. And I've always sort of relied on that service for thank you gifts or just little like tokens of appreciation. If I go on holiday with someone or I go for dinner, I take a photo at that event, upload it to Addison Ross, put it in a nice frame and send it to them. And it just makes you look so thoughtful. So I'm so excited to now have our own photo frames with that incredible service that people can buy. On the dining table, I wanted to keep it really simple. We use this dining table every day to eat meals, so I didn't want to fill it up too much with flowers. Um, but she's kept it very simple, very rustic, which I love. And there's also a theme of um, you know, plants that you can eat, like these are artichokes. We've got some herbs like sage and rosemary. So it's very simple, but by having lots of little containers, it fills the space and it feels a lot more elaborate and luxurious. These are also a favorite of mine. It's like a little heather, which is in season right now. You could pick one of these up in a garden center and then she's put it in one of these um, weathered pots. This has just been patina to make it look old. Um, and she's got her ribbon on there, which I love. Celeste Rose design, again, super rustic. Gives me those Dalesford, Bamford vibes. And then I've combined that with some candles from Bamford, again, so it's just filling in the spaces. And in the video, she talks about how she doesn't want anything too perfect. So if you notice, there's nothing's like completely lined up. It's kind of like in a zigzag. And then I decided to put that on top of a runner. I feel like when you've got lots of containers, you need to kind of ground them. So we originally put this together and there was just the clear table. I didn't want to do a full on tablecloth because the kids eat on this table every day and it would be wrecked after one meal. But this runner I made myself on a sewing machine actually. And the fabric is from one of our Andrew Martin collections. You can still buy it. I will link it in the description box. But basically what I did, it wasn't tricky. I just got the fabric, folded it over, ironed it, and then sewed this on a sewing machine. My mum is super handy. You know, when I was younger, she taught me how to do gardening. Um, she would make dresses for my sisters. Um, we even laid a patio in our house in Holland. Like, I think I did that when I was like six years old, helping her. So she's taught me a lot of those skills. And she came here one weekend, I was like, mum, I'm putting you to work. You need to teach me how to make a tablecloth. So we did that as a little project. And then with some off cuts, she actually made some little lavender bags with Ava. So that was really cute. This is the room we really retreat into as the nights get a little bit darker. It's very cozy. It just gives you a hug as you come into it. So a few things that we've done in here is obviously we've got some more flowers on the coffee table, just a small arrangement. She found this bracken on the side of the road. It's a really good time right now to get it. Celeste talks a bit more in detail about how if you're going to do foraging, you should do that. You need to be very sort of mindful of doing it in a respectful way and also careful how you cut it so that it doesn't damage the plant. But I love these big tall branches, they look so dramatic and again it gives that injection of this beautiful tan colour that goes so well with the frame, goes so well with my jumper and against this grey background it just gives an injection of warmth and instantly says autumn. Yeah, I don't know why I was so worried about filming that, that was ridiculous, but it was such a great video to make and the feedback was amazing, some really really nice comments, a lot of people interested in bathroom design. Um, so what we thought after that was that we should film another more generic bathroom video and make it all about our top tips for designing bathrooms. So that's coming next in our um, next video in two weeks time. And I'm gonna share some examples from our portfolio as well, lots of different ideas you can apply if you're designing your bathrooms right now. So make sure you don't miss that one. I felt really sad. It actually shocked me how upset I felt. I'm not afraid to admit that I did cry. Actually thinking about it now makes me wanna cry. I, never met her but I just think she was an incredible woman and I think a lot of people have said it but you didn't really realize how much she meant to you until she'd gone she was such a constant presence and an incredible woman she defined an era I think losing someone like the Queen that's always been such a constant presence really 
makes you aware of loss in general. So I just want to say to any of those who might be watching this and have recently suffered a personal loss, I'm thinking of you. Stay well, look after yourselves, and I'll see you very soon.